Jesus Christ, you understand, the Savior that we follow was rejected. He was an offense. He was a stranger and an alien in this world. He is the anomaly. And so if you're going to live as a follower of Jesus Christ, you're going to live as one who expects the same outcome. Now, don't misunderstand me. There's plenty of Christians walking around, and they're, they're, they, they offend lots of people. Not because of Jesus Christ, just because they're jerks, right? It's, it's not what Peter is saying here, right? But, but if you carry the likeness of Jesus Christ in you, then yes, you will be an offense to this world because of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the holy anomaly. Living as a holy anomaly starts with Jesus. Second, living as a holy anomaly means that we are a temple for his presence. We are a temple for his presence. Let's go back to verse 5. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house. This this week, we had the blessing of, of going on a hike up to Seven Falls. Man, alive, I've never seen so much water up there. It's fantastic. And all along the way, there's these beautiful rocks, right? We have beautiful rocks here in Arizona. In fact, so, so here's, a, here's an Arizona rock for us, right? These are all along the path up there. They're beautiful. God, God has made us into living stones. But you know what? I don't, I don't remember the stones that we walked past. They're beautiful. There's a lot of them. Not much purpose they're serving other than holding things there. God has made us, his people, to be living stones. Not to be strewn in the desert, but what? To be built up into a spiritual house. There's another place that I've been with some beautiful rocks, and maybe you've been there too, Sedona. And in Sedona, there's a, a chapel called the Chapel of the Holy Cross. Here's a picture of the Chapel of the Holy Cross. If you've ever been there, you have not forgotten this chapel. Stunning. Stunning chapel. Built with rocks like these that are chiseled and, and placed and, and are a spiritual house. And so it is with us. God purposes us, not just individually to be living rocks, but, but living rocks put, put together into a spiritual house. Now, does that, does that mean that we do not have the Spirit of God living in us if we are followers of Jesus Christ? No, absolutely we do. We do. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, God has granted you his spirit. You have his presence that you can commune with. And yet there's something else. There's something special. There's something beautiful that God intentions about the, the community, the gathered community of his people. If you are watching this online, we're so glad you are. There's many reasons you could be walking, watching online. You're sick, you're, you're, you're checking out new life for the first time. That's a gift. It's a beautiful thing. But do you know that God has something more for you? To participate in the gathered fellowship, the gathered connected body of believers, the spiritual house, and in that God grants us a special gift of his presence. I hope as you come today, and as you pray and as you hear the word of God read, and as you sing songs, and I hope you sing them at the top of your lungs, that you feel that God grants you, he gifts you a taste of his presence. Because there's something special about the spiritual house of God's people. As we gather together in worship, as we gather together in, in, in homes in living rooms, and kitchens, and swimming pools. God says, I, I, I inhabit the praises, I inhabit the presence of my spiritual house in a beautiful way. And so we, 
We are to be a living temple, purpose for God's presence.